Hey everybody, it's Lynette, and today I'm going to be going through a really quick video on some of our standalone Z10 twist lock controls. Uh, again, these are specific to standalone. We offer it in a PIR and a microwave. So basically, we are introducing two new standalone sensors, and these will basically replace the existing SCN 5A stash or slash M slash Z10 and also the SCN 5A slash PIR Z10. So you'll notice the part number here at the top is a little bit different. It's an SCN 5A dash SZMR or PR, depending upon whether it's microwave or if it is um, PIR. And both of these are white. So it's dash WH in the part number. Now, again, both of these are standalone. And in the trainings, I always refer to these as kind of like the popcorn effect because each sensor acts independently, unlike, say, a network lighting control solution where you can group fixtures and create zones and do things like that. These standalone sensors are commissioned via a commissioning tool. That means they're programmed via a commissioning tool and need to be commissioned independently, meaning one at a time. And you can see that we have a little bit new commissioning tool uh, there in the upper right hand corner. You can find out more about that commissioning tool at ICO.com. Now, as I mentioned, you do have two choices when it comes to these standalone sensors, either PIR or microwave. PIR detects motion through changes in temperature, and it's a great for any areas that have a lot of movement, like outdoor applications near trees. Microwave, on the other hand, detects motion using waves, and when the waves get sent and they are blocked, the sensor is then triggered. And so any type of movement at all will make the fixture turn on. So it's obviously not ideal for outdoor applications when you maybe have it near trees or even in the case where you might have the fixture placed around ceiling fans, or if a fixture has any kind of sway, you really want to stay away from microwave sensors in those cases. Now, both of these sensors can be mounted anywhere from 8 to 40 feet, but if you look on the detection pattern found on the spec sheet, you will see that about 20 to 30-ish is about ideal. Now, both of these do install using a Z10 twist lock receptacle. Of course, if the fixture has a screw and receptacle, you just need to use the Z10 adapter for screw and receptacles, and you can check out the spec sheet for more information on that. Now, these sensors do have a factory default that can also be found on the spec sheet. However, through the remote commissioning tool, you can set brightness, uh, aka also known as high-end trim. You can set your dim level, your sensitivity, your hold time, and your dim time. And you can also enable the daylight sensor as well. Now, these do feature daylight harvesting. This is a great feature and is great for indoor applications where natural daylight is present. Although these both have occupancy detection, this feature can be disabled and the sensor can function as just a photo cell alone uh, for like dust to dawn type applications. And by the way, I know I've trained on this before where I've said in the case of using a PIR sensor, absolutely you should not use that in an outdoor application due to that white plastic around the sensor. Um, that actually, sorry, let me back up. Actually, I used to say that the PIR sensor had to be used, absolutely had to be used in outdoor applications due to that white plastic around the sensor. Uh, and you should never ever use the microwave in those outdoor applications. This is actually no longer the case. And here's why. So the biggest improvement to both of these sensors is that the photo cell and function as a traditional dust to dawn or two stage dimming, uh, AKA midnight dimming. So since both of these feature dual ambient and daylight sensing technology, it basically improves the accuracy for outdoor settings, even when the sensor is placed where the artificial light is coming out of the fixture, like in the case of maybe the Verge or the new AAL area light. So on the spec sheet, you're going to see that we actually call this out. And what we say on the spec sheet is that dual ambient and daylight sensing technology uh, is present in these sensors. And we say that it is a great way to improve accuracy in outdoor applications when the sensor is within range of artificial light emitted from the fixture. And of course, this results in a more energy efficient and reliable lighting system. So no longer do you have to worry about just using only the PIR in those applications. You now actually can use either one of these, either the PIR or the microwave. This dual technology sensor can pick up the difference basically between ambient and infrared or um, actual daylight. And that's the reason why you can get by with using any of these, even when you have that natural daylight um, in the direct view of the sensor. 
Now certifications on this particular um, product on either, either one of these uh, basically is you got Rojas, you got FCC, you got ETO, they are IP65, uh, and they of course come with a five-year warranty too. So to kind of give you an idea of how this works with our products, uh, this is basically just a quick snapshot of um, some of these control ready products that can easily accommodate either uh, standalone or in the case of network lighting controls too, you can easily accommodate network lighting controls with any of these fixtures. And so um, in this case, we want to talk specifically about the standalone controls. So if you are using any of these fixtures that have a twist lock Z10 receptacle, such as the LLHG, the VERT, the SCS, or the SIG, you can easily add standalone control solutions. Now you'll see here that the two previous models of our standalone sensors are listed here. Uh, that is the SCN 5A slash PIR slash Z10. And of course the other one is the SCN 5A slash M slash Z10. Those are both the legacy standalone controls. And those of course were offered again in PIR microwave, 40 foot mounting height, uh, but again, you really the ideal for those were like between 80 and 30 or eight, eight and 30 feet. Uh, those featured ambient threshold, they they were also IP65. They had the ability to set uh, sensitivity, brightness, high and trim, hold time, and also the uh, time delay. But of course, as I just mentioned, those two previous products I just talked about, those are going to be re replacing these other two that you see up in the upper right-hand corner of this box. And again, the biggest feature is that it does have that photo cell and it can function as a traditional dust to dawn or the two-stage dimming, uh, aka midnight dimming and daylight harvesting. So that's the biggest improvement, as I mentioned already. Now, if you're using any of these other screw-in type um, receptacles that you can find on these products uh, listed here, like the LHC1, the LH1, um, even the HBX3, that's a new one that's not listed here, but the HBX3 as well. If you're using any of those that have that screw-in type feature, what you're gonna have to do is make sure you purchase this um, adapter and then that adapter can be um, used to uh, convert that to a Z10 receptacle. And then you can use uh, these uh, new standalone sensors if you want to. If you have any questions, I can be reached at lynette.schafer at ico.com. Thanks again.